Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we are going to plant up a whole bunch of new shrubs along this front north, uh, the north front lawn border. This is the new shrub border that we've been working on for quite some time now. I've got the plants picked out, I've got them placed where I want them, and today's the day they're going to get installed. So come with me and let's talk about how we're doing this project. Now I should mention that our neighbors across the street are having some trees taken down. So they've got, um, they've got chainsaws and they've got the chipper shredder and they've got big heavy machinery making a whole lot of noise. Today I'd like to share with you how I completed my landscape plan for this north front lawn border and then how I chose plants and then how I chose where to place the plants. I'm gonna share all of that process with you today. In the meantime, Dave and I are gonna get planting. We're gonna use our normal planting method for this. So that involves digging the hole twice as wide, only as deep as the pot that the plants come in. Then I will be adding in some Biotone starter fertilizer, and that's intended to get those roots off to a great start that opens up um, soil life, adds microbes to the soil, and really gets plants off to a great start. I will also be probably just shoveling and mixing in the layer of compost that we've already laid across the entire space. Then we'll put the plant in place and we'll backfill with that mix of compost and native soil. We'll water it very deeply and then eventually I'm going to be adding drip irrigation and then finally mulch on top of this garden bed right here. I don't know how much of that we're going to get done today. I'm hoping to get all the planting done today at least. And, um, and so that's what we're going to do. Now because we have such heavy clay soil, we're going to leave the root balls about an inch or two above the level of the native soil. The reason we do that is because clay soil can hold too much water for some plants and their roots might actually rot if they don't get enough drainage in the clay. And so by lifting the root ball up out of the soil just a little bit, an inch or two, and then surrounding that last inch or two of root ball with nice fluffy compost or even just a mulch layer, that lets those roots at the top layer of that plant drain right off and not have any problem with rotting so that the plant is healthier in the long run in our clay soil. So that's what we're gonna be doing with all of these plants. And so let's go get some planting done, folks. So Dave digs the holes for me and I put the plants in or cut roots out of the holes sometimes as needed, like here. So I always add Biotone starter fertilizer to the holes and that gets the roots off to a good start. And then I take the plants out of the containers, which sometimes is harder than others. Find the right position for it, turn it around the right direction, make sure I have the front going the way I want it to go and then backfill with the soil. Now this soil has been fortified with some compost and um, shredded leaves have been laying on top of this soil for a few months now since last fall. So this soil is pretty good now I would think and we'll just tuck that plant down in there and then uh, make sure it's nice and firm and water it in well. And then just repeat this process with all the other shrubs in the, uh, in the bed that we're working on. Here's another example. There goes the biotone. And then just put those plants in there and get them all backfilled. Now, I didn't tease out the roots on many of these root balls. I think they're going to be just fine because it's young in their pots for this season. They haven't become root bound yet. So um, I didn't worry about teasing the roots off of them. I am planting each of them a little bit high and then filling in with uh, compost around the rest of the root ball. Again, that lets the clay soil that we have um, stay away from the top part of the roots so that they don't drown in the clay. Now, we had to move the Dragon Lady Holly hole a little bit because we encountered some tree roots, but we got it in. And then this is the China Boy Holly back in the back corner back here. I didn't show a video of all of these plants going in because, you know, it's pretty much the same scenario for all of them. But uh, here, Dave's moment in the sun, um, showing his prowess at digging the holes for us. A 
cutting the roots out. Lots of roots around this area. Let's go see. Is it a good hole? It's a good hole. Okay. Oh, it is a good hole. Thanks, man. I want to talk real quick about this next one. I'm planting what is a bare root rose that I just put into a pot about three or four weeks ago, maybe. I don't anticipate that the root ball on this is gonna to hold together when I take it out of the pot because I think it's just not been rooted in long enough for those roots to have grown into the soil very much. Maybe a little, but not very much. So I have asked Dave to make me a hole that's really wide and that has sort of an ice cream cone pyramid shape of pile of dirt down in the center of it so that I can take these roots and spread them out like lava going down the sides of that little soil mountain down there. So that's what I'm hoping will happen when I take this out of the pot. I hope I'll see roots that I can put on top of this mound of soil. Let's see. I gotta get my biotone in there first though. All right, let's see how these roots look after a couple of weeks in this pot. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> the soil didn't stick to it. That's fine. But you can see how there's this like bowl shape to the roots. And so I'll be able to spread this on top of that mountain of soil, have the roots going down the mountain of soil and uh, have nice contact with soil all the way around. And then it should grow really nicely. It's like that. This is my sweet Juliet rose. I'm really eager to have in the garden. Now over here is the compost that we've been spreading. Pretty sure this is mulch though. I think Dave mulched on this section yesterday. All right, sweet Juliet, you are in a new spot. Yay. So you've seen the planting bed out there where we're working on putting in all those shrubs. And I wanted to share with you how I decided what to buy, what to plant and where to plant them. So you may have seen a video earlier, um, probably about a month ago, I don't remember exactly, where I was drawing shapes kind of along a skyline view of what I wanted that border to look like. I had printed out the border across a couple of different photographs and then I used tracing paper to kind of brainstorm and scheme on what I could plant where. And the plan that I had sketched out kind of had pyramid shapes and ball shapes. It had in plants there that I knew I already had in the landscape and it had ideas for other things to put in. And I was drawing them by shape. So balls, rectangles, fountain shapes, pyramid shapes, tree shapes, things like that. So I had this idea. In the meantime, we were working on the soil. We were working on, you know, the uh, getting the bed prepared for plants. I also had already planted a few things. I had already put in an Eastern Snowball Viburnum. I'd already put in a Wygela and a Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon. Um, and I'd already put in those Skip Laurels and the Viburnums down behind the tree. So I already had some plants in place. So then what I did was I drew a scale drawing of the of the garden bed I actually went outside with a tape measure and I used different um, anchor points to draw and come up with a to scale drawing of the flower bed and actually this is what it looks like finished but of course it wasn't finished when I was first drawing it so I have the border laid out I have the edges laid out the rough um, design of the curves and things like that. And then I also measured where on this map I should be drawing the um, plants that I already had in the ground. And I put those on the plan and I said, okay, those are there. So now what? Okay, so the next thing I did was I referred back to my idea sketch that looked like this. And I started researching online for plants that would fit the criteria. I knew I needed everything to be deer resistant. I wanted things to be native if I could find natives that fit my criteria. I wanted a lot of winter interest, including both evergreen and like berries and things like that. I wanted spring flowering 
shrubs. I also want fragrant things if I can get them. Um, but deer resistant, of course, deer resistant being at the top of the list. So I did a lot of research. I looked for native plants that met as many of those criteria as I could. And I wrote a list and I actually put the list right here on my sketch. And so there was a lot of things on this list, things like Pieris, Mahonia, Sweet Spire, Wygela, Daphne, Father Gilla, Burning Bush, Burford Holly, Dragon Lady Holly, Spirea, Boxwood, Soft Touch Holly, Elysium, Sweet Box, Beauty Berry, Clethra, Nandina, Barberry, Caria, Mock Orange, Forsythia, Inkberry, Ninebark, Peony, Coralberry, Allspice, Gardenia, Camellia, Viburnum, Lilac, Juniper, and I'm sure there are others as well. Now, not all of these suit the site, right, because this is probably I can't consider it a full sun site at best each of the square feet out there individually taken as individuals um, they each probably only get part sun at best I can't imagine that there are any of them they're gonna get like real full sun six hours or more so a lot of the shrubs that I just listed require full sun to be successful but you know I I'm gonna have to kind of fudge on that because there are some full sun plants that I want to put out there. In fact, I already did put a couple out there. But what it means is that they just won't grow as big or they won't grow as fast or maybe they won't flower as prolifically as they would if they were in full sun. But a lot of the plants that I have put out there already say they are full sun to part sun and that's perfectly fine. So I did a lot of research and then I went to the nurseries all around me and I looked to see what they had in stock. I had things on my idea list that aren't available at the local nurseries, at least not at this time of year. And so I had to modify my list a little bit like that. But then also, you know, you see something in the nursery and you think, oh, I hadn't thought of that. How can I fit that in? So I did a little bit of that. But then I ended up bringing home a lot of shrubs the other day, last week, and then I then I went back to my sketch and I pulled out my scale drawing and I started using my landscape templates that I got for Christmas that uh, my daughter-in-law gave to me and I started drawing. So what I would do is, for example, I said, okay, I have Dragon Lady Hollies. How big do those get at maturity? Well, they get to be... Uh, 10 to 20 feet tall, but only four to six feet wide. You can prune them to keep them at four feet if you like, or you can let them grow out to six feet wide. So I picked out my four foot diameter evergreen stencil and I laid it down on the drawing and I sketched it in with pencil. And then I put in where I thought I wanted all three of the Dragon Lady Hollies and I laid them in there. Look at that, now I've got my plan underway. Next, I took my, say, I bought a Little Henry Sweet Spire. Um, that's two to three feet by two to three feet. So I got the three foot stencil and I picked a spot and I put it in there. And I did that with all of the plants that I had purchased on my shopping trip. And when it got down to it, I noticed that if I laid in all of these shrubs at their mature size, um, the border is already pretty darn full. And so that's good news because that means I don't have to buy a whole lot of more shrubs to fill up my shrub border. On the other hand, keep in mind, they're not gonna get the full sun that they most of them want. And so they probably won't get as big as their listed mature size. Some of them might stay quite a bit smaller. So, you know, I'm going to have to live and learn and see how those plants do out there. But anyway, I used my templates and I used my plant list and information off of the internet about the mature sizes of all those plants. And I drew in where to put things. So then I had what I thought was a great planting plan from the bird's eye view, looking down on the, um, on the ground from above. So the next thing I decided to do was go back to that skyline view as if I'm standing in front of the border and looking at the shapes and colors and uh, relative positioning from the, the front of the border. So to do that, I just transferred down the page. So here's my planting plan up here. So you can see these are the three clethra. This is the sugar tip rose of Sharon, which by the way, it looks like I have overplanted. I'm going to have to trim the clethra back to let the sugar tip grow. Um, these are the dragon ladies here and here and here. Um, and these are the skip laurels and so forth. So to get this view of things, which shows how it would look from the front when they're mature, what I did was I looked at this plant. The center of the plant is right here. So I came down the page. This would be the center of that plant. 
I looked at the width of that plant and drew that down here. So that would be like right down here. Same thing on this side that goes over to that wide. So come down this way, that would be right over here. And I know it's pyramid shaped. So I drew a pyramid with those dimensions. I knew that the mature height was 10 to 20 feet tall. So I think I picked 14 or 15 feet just as a you know middle of the road answer. And I drew in the thing right where it belongs on the plan. And I did that with all of them. So these are the clethra. So for example, three clethra, I picked the centers and I put the centers of them down. And then I picked the uh, sides and actually used a straight edge to do this. So I said, okay, there's the side of the clethra. So down here, the side of the clethra is right here. Same thing over here. This side of the clethra is right here. So I drew in three shrubs. I, here's my sugar tip. And I just transferred this bird's eye view, like over here, here's the other um, dragon lady, the center of the dragon lady here. So there's the center there. Here's the edge over here. So here's the bottom edge right here. Here's the edge over here. So here's the bottom edge here. And I drew a triangle there. This is my beauty berry. So there's the center of it. I know that it's in front of the dragon lady. So I drew it in front. So I put the center, lined that up, and I made it look like a fountain shape, which is what beauty berry has as a shape. And then I transferred the outside edges again. And so here, in, by transferring all of this bird's eye view down onto the elevation view, I can now get a really good sense of what these plants will look like when they're mature. I also then used my colored pencils to color in a rough idea of the color of the shrubs. Um, you can see, you know, the three tall dragon ladies are dark green and they'll have red berries in the winter um, and so on. And so this is what I think this plan will turn into if things go well. This is the um, Eastern Snowball Viburnum, which I am planning to, um, which I'm planning to trim up like a small tree. So it'll look like that. Right now it's only this big. So I drew it in as its current size as well. So this is the plan for the, um, the shrubs. Now, when I did this transfer from up here to down here, I noticed that some things were in a position that wasn't going to work. Um, so for example, this Wygela, um, I had it planted more like right in this area right here. And so once I decided I wanted to put the dragon lady there, I knew I had to move the Wygela. So I actually pulled it on the plan. I pulled it down to the front. I scooted it into its current position and then I drew it there. And that gives more room for the sugar tip and it keeps it out of the clethra and out of the um, dragon lady. So I also used this part, the bird's eye view plan, I made adjustments to what I thought I was going to be planting. Um, I had to rearrange things based on their mature size. Again, so like this dragon lady, currently it's this small space, but in the end, it'll be this bigger space. And so I tried with all of the plants to do that. This, for example, is the sugar shack button bush. It's only small right now, but it will get to be this size. So I drew that in as well. And so this is how I came up with my where I'm going to plant my plants. It was based on this front elevation of the flower bed and the shapes that I had originally brainstormed on this plan. You can see the similarities. It's not exactly the same as this brainstormed plan, but it's pretty close. I've got three pyramid shapes here, one, two, three. I've got the Eastern snowball right here. Um, and then I have low mounded things. I have fountain shaped things. Here's a fountain shaped thing here. Here's a fountain shaped thing here, um, low mounds and so on and so forth. Now, of course, I have to remind you all that I'm not a trained landscape designer. I have done a lot of reading, a lot of watching YouTube and a lot of playing around and trying things over my gardening life. And so 
I couldn't have done this kind of planning when I first started gardening or even really until YouTube, really, until YouTube had so much gardening information available on it. And so there's a lot you can learn by watching and listening to other gardeners and watching their YouTube channels or reading their books or watching the TV shows. Reach out to friends. There's probably a program near you at your local extension office if you live in the United States for where you can take classes about landscape and so forth. So what I want to tell you is don't be afraid to jot down something on paper and see if you can make it into um, a sketch that will give you a good enough idea about where things are going so that you can turn that into a planting plan. So just remember I'm not a professional landscape designer by any means. If you do want to learn a little bit more there's a great gardener named Yulia and you can go to her at Y Garden. Um, I'll put a link to her channel down below. Um, she has some really great videos about concepts of design for your landscape and you might learn a lot. I know I did learn a lot from Yulia's uh, videos. Um, and there are probably other garden design channels out there as well. I don't happen to follow any but Yulia's but um, I'm sure there are others and you might find a lot of information available to you from uh, the perspective of a garden designer for your home landscape. So this is how I got my plan put together. Let's go back outside and look at the north front lawn border and see where the plants are in place and see how things look now that all of the plants have been put in the ground. So far, I'm not done planting out there. The first plant we put in here is this Southern Gentleman Winterberry and it's right out by the sidewalk, right at the beginning of the bed. Now this is intended to be the pollinator for the winter red winterberry that's a little bit further up. So standing here on the sidewalk you can see how the bed looks and the idea is that we'll have interesting things to see from the sidewalk all around. Including these viburnums here. There are four of them. Three all that glitters and one blue muffin and I'm hoping that the blue muffin will pollinate the others. We'll see. Now I went around the other side of the tree. This is a China Boy Holly. I have two of these, and this one is intended to pollinate the Dragon Lady that is uh, just up the way a little bit. Um, China Boy is good at that. And then these are the Skip Laurels. These were the first thing that I planted in this bed. Skip Laurels are a great evergreen shrub, and there are three of them here, and they'll grow to be nice and tall and fill in a little bit and have some um, coverage for privacy. There's the first Dragon Lady of three. And again, this one will be tall and narrow as an upright evergreen with red berries in the winter. And you can see the little flower buds coming on and those will eventually be pollinated by China Boy and turn into beautiful red berries. In front of the Dragon Lady, we've got my transplanted Beauty Berry, which is a vase-shaped shrub. It's deciduous. It's cut way back right now, but I'm not planning to cut it back in the future. Um, it'll grow to be about five feet in diameter and uh, have beautiful purple berries on it in the fall. Right now it's surrounded by a green clump of lesser celandine, which is an invasive weed that I should probably get rid of. Now here's the winter berry, the winter red one. Now this will be covered with red berries in the winter. After the leaves fall off, the berries remain until January and then the birds come and get them. Here's a Japanese holly. This will be a tall, upright uh, pyramid shape as well, but just plain green. Little Henry Sweet Spire. It'll be three by three or so, maybe four by four, but probably three by three. And its claim to fame is its white fragrant flowers. There's the Eastern Snowball Viburnum. Again, we're gonna be limbing that up into a tree form. And so it'll be a small tree form here on this shrub border. Now, on the other side of the Eastern Snowball there, you see the first plant I've got here is this button bush, Sugar Shack button bush. Um, it hasn't leafed out yet, and it gets to be about four by four, maybe five by five, but probably I'll try to keep it at the four by four level. And then behind that, another Dragon Lady. This is the second of three. And here is the Wine and Roses Wygela that I put in last fall. Now I did have to move this. So I dug it up and moved it to a new location so that it wouldn't interfere with the other shrubs that we're planting once everything's at maturity. 
You can see I've got a couple of annuals sitting there waiting to go on the ground. These are the three Clara. Again, this is a new plant to me. I'm hoping they do well in this location. They should fill out and eventually touch each other and be a nice backdrop for this sugar tip Rose of Sharon, which has creamy green and white variegated leaves with soft pink, roughly flowers. And those Clara have a dark green evergreen leaf, but the new foliage is kind of a, a red burgundy color, so that's nice. There's a soft touch holly there that I put in a couple of weeks ago. And that other dragon lady back there in the corner nearest the fence. We will be updating this rock pathway so that it connects the two in the shape of a Y. And there's another China boy holly back in there. His job is to get, again be a, a pollinator for the dragon ladies in this area. And there's that dragon lady. I think that's going to be looking really nice compared to the fence and the walnut trees behind it once it gets a little bigger. And that is a Korean Spice Viburnum, which is lovely scented flowers right now. I moved this Leucothwe. It used to be back inside that Vinca ground cover, and I pulled it out to have a little bit of more prominent spot. There's the Sweet Juliet Rose, another Leucothwe, and a bunch of perennials and things. So with that, this new shrub border is fully completed planting with all the foundation shrubs that we have planned for it at this time. I'm really pleased with the way this is looking as, it, as we pan across. We can see that we do have evergreens, we've got deciduous, we're gonna have a lot of berries, we're gonna have varying foliage colors and textures, and I'll be planting perennials in amongst this area this year as well. So it's really gonna be a nice addition to the gardens in our property. Well, friends, I have to say I am so happy with the way this border is turning out. It is not done, but the first round of shrubs are in. I do intend to put in some more things. You know, there will be perennials in here. I'll be putting dahlias in here for sure. And some of my cut flower annuals that I've been growing from seed will be in this area. Um, and then over time, more perennials and more, probably even more small shrubs. But for today, for the beginning of the season, this is off to a great start. If I added nothing else ever into this border, this would be a great beautiful shrub border in my opinion you know my considered opinion I hope that you learned something today I hope that it was helpful to see how I went about planning this um, garden area and I hope you're having a wonderful time planning ideas for your gardens in this coming growing season have a wonderful day friends and I'll see you again soon bye bye